And to talk more about the ongoing conflict and help give us some perspective on the latest war efforts, I am bringing in now News Nation security contributor Tracy Walder. She's also a former CIA officer and FBI special agent. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Natasha. And I know you are closely tracking this humanitarian crisis that's unfolding right now. A million Gazans told to flee their homes and move south. The UN calling this mass exodus catastrophic. They are warning about water running out, food running out. Where are these hundreds of thousands of civilians going? And have they already be been turned away from any of the safe havens they were expected to go to? That's such a, a complex question. I mean, the reality is, is there's only three exits and two of them are controlled by Israel and Israel will not be opening those up. The only place they can go is to the south, which is Rafah, which is what Egypt, quite frankly, controls. And there's talks going on right now. However, I'm hearing conflicting stories that those talks may have broken down. The talks were between Netanyahu and President Sisi in Egypt, and Egypt was agreeing to open up that border, but they're hesitant to because what they're worried about is if Palestinians come in is this permanently now taking Palestinians away from their home? They don't want to contribute to that, which is understandable. But now there's talks that they will not open it until they know that an aid package um, has been passed at, through the United States and through those channels in Rafah into Gaza to help those that are still there. So it, I guess the question, the answer to your question is that's very much in flux. But right now, it looks like the only place will be the Rafah border, which is in the south. What are the stakes here? I mean, especially as Israel seems to be, you know, by the hour, mounting this this ground offensive are these civilians who are not able to escape directly in harm's way well, I think there's an added layer to that, actually. There was reporting that came out today that Iran stated that if Israel escalates, they're going to get involved. That's concerning to me, and I do think a real reason why the U.S. brought in the carrier Eisenhower as well, that second carrier. So that's concerning in terms of how big this can get. The other piece of the puzzle is that I think Israel is going to respond very differently than how they've responded in the past. In the past, the the bombing has been more targeted in nature. I do think it's going to be much more indiscriminate carpet bombing type of situation that we're going to see on top of that with the urban warfare from a ground invasion. So this is going to be really, really bad. And I'm concerned because I don't know how these millions of people are going to be able to get out. It is incredibly concerning. And, and I know you mentioned that breaking news that we've been talking about tonight, the Pentagon moving that second aircraft carrier strike group to the Mediterranean Sea in order to deter Iran or Hezbollah. What is the concern here of a wider war? What is the U.S. urgently trying to avoid, especially in regards to Iran? I mean, I think the U.S. is trying to avoid a full-fledged confrontation with Iran. Really, what we're seeing here right now is perhaps a proxy war between the two, really with Iran operating out of, Pal out of Palestine through Hamas, and then potentially us in our assistance with Israel. It's a proxy war between these two countries, and that is very concerning when you have two nuclear powers, basically, that have decades upon decades of issues with each other sort of culminating at a head. I I'm very concerned. As we are expecting this ground offensive to begin, I do want to pick up on what you were saying about urban warfare, because it seems like a major obstacle potentially Israel is facing in Gaza is infiltrating and navigating these massive Hamas underground tunnel systems that they have set up. Uh, 300 miles, we know exits are hidden in between homes and civilian areas, three levels deep in some places. There is concern that hostages have been taken into these tunnels. Can you explain the strategic advantages that these tunnels give Hamas? And also, to add another layer to that, a lot of these tunnels are concrete in case, which makes aerial surveillance of them even more difficult because we can't get infrared technology to see where people are um, inside those tunnels. So that makes it even more complicated for Israel. Um, the reality is, is these tunnels are, quite frankly, probably Israel's worst nightmare. They have a fantastic urban warfare training center actually located in Israel, and they do train for this. But typically, one of the reasons they don't engage in this style of warfare, quite frankly, with Hamas is because it's very risky to them. And they're always trying to minimize, you know, loss of human life. As you mentioned before, the hostages are another issue on top of that. The spokesperson for the IDF, though, did say a few days ago um, that he can't guarantee uh, the safe recovery of those hostages, which is a huge departure. I mean, you're looking at Israel, who's traded thousands of Hamas prisoners for the return of one IDF soldier, and now they're saying they can't guarantee the safety of those hostages. And so I think they are more focused right now on locating those tunnels and rooting out Hamas members than they may be in terms terms of negotiating to get the hostages free. Tracy Walder, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for making time for us on a Saturday. Appreciate it.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.